Hello everyone and welcome back to the 20 years of Call of Duty. We are still on Infinite Warfare and this time we're going to tackle a side mission. Now just before I begin, I will know, I have noted that the first Infinite Warfare mission I put, which was Black Sky, I noticed that my microphone was way too quiet and that the game was too loud. I believe I've rectified this issue. Um, I certainly won't put this video up if it's not. Uh, just wanted to make you all know that I am aware of it. I do apologise. Part of me thinks about redoing the video. Uh, I'll see how it performs. If it's if it turns out it's a mess and people aren't enjoying it, I will re-record it. It'll be a bit of a pain, but I don't mind doing it. It's a fun enough level. But anyway, we're going to do some of these. Let's do this one. Take out three SDF high-ranking officers. I remember this being quite fun. You can actually see this order. This isn't the order like you officially do these levels. You've got free reign to do the Jackal Strikes, which is all the space combat, or the ship assaults. I find the ship assaults to be a lot more satisfying. Where it's at is the main missions, they're definitely the highlight of the game. You can sort of see that I basically did all of the, the ship assaults first, because I just didn't enjoy the Jackal Strikes, but... We'll do a ship assault. We will go on Specialist, where you'll be able to see what I was talking about earlier. Specialist was such a great addition to the game. Um, it's a real shame. As I say, we've not seen a difficulty mode like it. I mean, I'll cut Black Ops Cold War a bit of slack because I know that was a really rushed development. That was very loud, wasn't it? Jeez. Does this game just not listen to my audio? Yeah, this is the level I wanted, though, because we're starting on asteroids. Right, that is definitely loud. Um, I might be way out. I'll maybe way out of whack. It might be my headset. Let's turn this stuff right down because I don't want another instant like that. There's no story content anyway here, so don't worry if you're not hearing things. There's always subtitles. Okay, that seems better. So as you can see on my bottom of the screen, you can see L1 and R1. But you'll notice that I've now got health packs and helmets. So I've got to manage my equipment properly. I'm trying to remember how this works. Whoop, return to combat. The game's not happy with me. Ah, oh, there we are. So I've got a grapple. Very useful. I think there is one level where you very much are taking out sniping people in an asteroid field. That's pretty cool. You'll also notice the display of a person in the bottom left. That's my health. And when I take a few bullets, you'll know exactly what I mean. But one thing this game does very well, that I think Black Ops 3 didn't, is variety. Now I know this is a side mission, but this mission starts very interesting. It's a complete stealth one. I think this is the one where you're in disguise, I might be wrong. But as I say, Black Ops 3 didn't really do that, other than perhaps the middle mission, which was a bit more of a horror vibe. But the rest were all long stretches of just shooting, and I know that's what you want out of Call of Duty, but... So, there we go. Set that guy down. I should have kicked the door then. Uh, we're close quarters. Uh, we'll stick with the holographic site. Or at least that's what I'd call it. Old school. Got some interesting lens of flare effects here as well, haven't we? But I think Black Ops 3 could have done with one level like this. Just one. But 2016, guys. An interesting year for video games. I believe the game of the year that year was Overwatch. And I think I was the only person on the planet who didn't play Overwatch. 
obviously I have like played it like at other people's houses and stuff and not been very good at it. It's it's a game I'd have to put a lot of time into. It was quite a shock when it won game of the year, but at least it was a game game. I can't stand it when you get these interactive films that seem to win the awards. So let's get an enemy uniform on. So we're going a bit Hitman here. And this uh, HUD layout really reminds me of Killzone. Uh, let's take... Yeah, let's use this. So interestingly, you've got to stay away from enemies. And we want to disable as many robots as we can. Because that stops them attacking us later. But if you get too close to enemies, they will, like, suss you out. So very similar to those Hitman games, isn't it? Where your disguise is only useful, you know, at a distance. Unless it's Hitman Absolution. Where you just had that, like, focus meter or something daft like that. I always love being disguised in games. I, I got the real Taste Flight Medal of Honor. That did that really well. There's nothing here, is there? We're going this way, aren't we? Right. I'm in. Target visual. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Proximity hack, this should work. If I don't look at them, they can't see me. That's my mentality. But Medal of Honor always had these levels where you were like disguised as a Nazi officer, in the early ones anyway. I had to keep on showing people your papers. Because that was the famous line. Can I see your papers, please? It got <laughs> it was insane. Ah, the eraser. Yes, I remember this. We'll have this. This is a special weapon, we'll need that. Oh, we've got a new weapon there. Let's explore a bit. That's what I like, though. You've got, you know, there's lots of stuff here to find. This is another kind of special pistol as well, isn't it? Oh, it looks cool, that, doesn't it? We won't use that, though, because I'm going to need an assault rifle of some kind. We've got the Eraser, which is the name of a very interesting Arnold Schwarzenegger film, if you've never seen that, from the mid-90s. In that film, he is what they call an eraser. It's quite literal. But it's the one with the really bad CGI, when he's on a plane and he's on a parachute and he's shooting a desert eagle at, um, at a plane. So it's a lot of fun. It's got lots of one-liners. Like all Arnold films. So we've got this tech officer here. We need to take this guy out. Anti grabs, they're quite useful, aren't they? Uh, well, yeah, we'll get shocks. Got the ID. Override live scan for class two officer McGrady. Good job nobody's heard that neck snapping. <laughs> I'm very grateful that the enemies aren't that like the type where it's like, hmm, you moved a bit suspiciously, you failed. You can do a you can sprint, you can jump around. The game remembers that it's a action game. That line always makes me laugh from Salt Away. It's like, oh, it's temp it's tempting to go hot, you know, like go loud and shoot everyone. Because I always remember playing Modern Warfare 2 Spec Ops and some of the missions were stealth based. And I always had a friend that when we were waiting, he was like, oh, it's so tempting to just shoot them all. And I'd get really annoyed because I do love stealth games. So my background is. Um, let's wait for this guy to move. Don't mind me, I'm just walking very peculiarly behind you. There we go. Stare at the wall. Not suspicious at all. <laughs> Kills on free also had a level where you disguised yourself as a Hellgast, didn't it? That's how it started, and it was the middle point of the game. Uh, I don't mind me, chaps.
Did I kill like one person? Yeah, there's no way to like do this where it's like, oh, nobody finds your kills because you have to kill people. But I ain't expecting too much from Call of Duty in terms of open-endedness with stealth sections. So there they go. They're gone. See you, chaps. Black Ops 1 also had a level where you were kind of disguised, weren't you? That didn't last very long when you were disguised as Russians, though. Let me just check a setting here very briefly. Right, bear with me guys, I'm back here. So I've got to follow this guy, it's always quite funny, but the auto aim keeps sticking to him. See you chaps. <laughs> oh, heck. So as you can see, my helmet's been smashed there. Soldier clear. It's me. I hate that unit. We'll get some more. I set the beacon for the rest. Let's change our... Can we change it? There we go. What is my L1 here? Whoa, 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 whoa. Took a bullet then. So I don't seem to have taken much damage there, so I assume that'll come back, that health. Let's use the eraser, though. No, oh, leg's been hit. There we go. I, I wanted to show it off because, as you can see, they get, like, properly... They just disintegrate. It's really cool. Um, we better use some health, haven't we? No, I'll keep going. You'll get a lot of this when permanently damaged. Oh, I picked up a stim there. Let's use it. There we go. Our legs are okay now. We're not going to hobble anymore. But yeah, it makes the game a lot more interesting when you've got this. I could do... There we go. Ah! Took a bullet in the leg. I'm alright. He's not hobbling too much. I'm going to need Salt to be quite good here, because... Doesn't help when you've not played the game in a while. <laughs> there we go. This gun isn't that good. I don't like it. What's the E-Rad? Yeah, I'll use this. This looks more damaging. Ah, that is horrendous recoil. What idiot said pick this up? <laughs> Those robots look real, but they're not real, are they? Well, they're not ready to go anyway. Ah! Oh, I've been hitting the leg. So when I went prone there, that wasn't me. That was that was the game. Because I've been shot in the leg. It's, you know, my character's like, can't... Oh, prick up my gun. My gun's been shot. So yeah, as you can see, this is a very cool mode. Right. Is that dealt with him? Yes. Oh my god, that's bright. Let's go. Get some ammunition in here. So the way the side missions work is, I think I mentioned in the last video, you get like a map of the solar system and you have to pick, you know, missions will pop up on it. I always remember PlayStation Access um, was a YouTube channel, it still is, and obviously was previewing games, would review games and do all sorts. It was officially partnered with Sony. Oh, this is hell. Oh my god. I might die here. Oh well, at least I can show this off. <laughs> Have that. Right, let's get some health. But yeah, they uh, they were having a developer interview, as they do. Oh no, I'm, my arm's broken, I can't do anything. Throw a grenade. But the developer was talking about how, you know, levels would appear on the map. And I always remember the interviewer, it was that Holly Bennett, and she asked, will different missions appear at different times? Like, will, you know, like, timed activated missions, because that was quite a thing at the time. 
And the developer was like, obviously just didn't expect that. Was like, ooh, that's something we could look to add. <laughs> no, it full well, that was never going to happen. It made me laugh because that's what Destiny was doing, wasn't it? Like, you know, different missions would appear at different times and stuff like that. I'm getting battered here. Yeah, they really were banking on this, uh, on these side ops, weren't they? All these side missions. There we go, that's one out of three. Because it's just about everywhere in the game. But I got to show off some cool grappling kills. Nice throw back to throttle that. Whoa! That was close. But you want to go for the high target ones. Like that. Got the flashing blue icon. Uh, yellow icon, sorry. But yeah, I just remember the dev getting asked this question. They obviously just were not expecting it at all. There we go. Three out of three. Nice work. That'll do it. We had rockets that time. That made it a lot easier. Aim for the nice circles that are going to appear. Lovely stuff. I always love this cutscene or this transition. It is an engine. It's not a cutscene because I'm moving the very slowly moving the stick there. This is. I can't. This is a cutscene, and you can tell because it switches frame rate. It's quite distracting actually. But this campaign has definitely got a big delayed appreciation. It didn't have much. Oh, let's <laughs> have a look at him. I wonder if anybody's ever interviewed Kit Harrington about that, because I've never heard him speak about his time on Call of Duty, like, did he enjoy it? I can't imagine he did. I mean, you want to talk about phoned in, it's about as phoned in as it gets. It's almost on the Peter Dinklage Destiny level, isn't it? And how, do you remember how they had to completely replace him with Noah North? That was too funny. So they've still got that whole Omar and um, Ethan don't get on. He doesn't like robots. He doesn't seem to like the captain. Adding in that false drama. Tell me. Well, we hold him back with these tag team tactical ops. Or? Or set def cuts us off of the blockade and we never see home again. We'll get home again, so. I know. See, I wanted to show this. You can go watch the news. Oh, it's Lewis Hamilton telling us. Oh, there he is, old Hamilton. Yeah, these you could give it, you give it, take it with these. You kind of completely skip this. I could have carried on, but hey, let's show some of the game off. I think the problem is the game. It it actually was more serious than I was expecting. Infinite Warfare. I think that's why I didn't like it. It marketed itself as having Kit Harrington, Conor McGregor, Lewis Hamilton, and I always thought they should have gone a little bit more mental with it because I always said Call of Duty was kind of giving up on being serious. Well, at least delve into it. Let's have a stupid fist fight in space with Conor McGregor. But the game plays it very straight, and I think they'd have been better off not getting celebrities in. It all felt very desperate, and I don't think Call of Duty needs to get desperate because it's going to sell regardless on name brand recognition alone. You know, they get one half decent Call of Duty and everyone's back on it again. On, yeah, so those who play Uncharted will recognise another voice here. Captain. Engineering and bridge sifted through Ethan's hack from the seizure. So that's obviously Chloe Fraser. That's Rhett, Tigress, the others. I said death. But the side missions transition very well in the campaign. Obviously, you can skip all this because you can just do the main missions. I think you have to do one side mission. But here's the menu. This is how it works. So 
So as you can see, I can pick any of these side missions. It's a little bit different because if I was playing the game normally, it would show main missions. But yeah, that's it. I think we've shown enough there. The main thing was to show that side mission, which we did. Hopefully the sound issues are a thing of the past and we've got that fixed. But I felt I had to show at least one side mission, you know, of the game if we're trying to show it off. Next, we'll move on to Operation Dark Quarry, which is quite an out there mission. I feel we had to pick that one. And I think I'm going to pick the last level, which is quite a long one. So that might be a two part video, but the ending's really good. So I feel like we've, we've got, to, got to play that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you for the next main missions. You have a good day.